There's all this computing power at our disposal. You can take thousands of images of a planet over a few minutes. You can process them on the computer and it will stack and align them and give you a better picture than any professional was getting before about the mid-1990s. So that extra processing power has given amateurs the ability to contribute even more. Of course, the professionals still stay a bit ahead because they've got Hubble and huge telescopes. But I think that the amateurs have just moved with the times, as they always have done. The digital revolution has undoubtedly launched amateur astronomy into a new orbit, but it's not to everyone's taste. Some traditionalists, like retired railway engineering manager John Meacham, still prefer to keep things simple. I call myself an agricultural astronomer. I'm a low-tech man, you see. I know you can have all this gear, but in my opinion, there's nothing like using simple equipment, which is easy to operate, uh, and easy to set up and then I can get on and do my observing and my drawing. I need to move with looking at variable stars which I should be looking at later on. I need to move with a telescope or the binoculars from one star field to another fairly quickly because in one night I might get through as many as 30 variable stars and that's a very important thing. Now I don't want to waste time fiddling about with a laptop or the go-to equipment and that sort of I know it has its place in astronomy. CCD equipment and high-tech is splendid. But in my opinion, there's nothing like simple equipment and looking directly at the sky. And that gives me a real kick, that does. John's passion for astronomy doesn't stop at looking through a telescope. It's a fertile subject for his other love, painting. Well, it's all part of the same thing in a way, really. I mean, I look at the sky, I make observations of the planets and of comets, Comet Matcholtz, which is uh, near the pole star at the moment. I get ideas from NASA space probes, from images and photographs that are sent back uh, by a spacecraft that have um, circled round the comet um, and given us an idea of what it looks like. But um, I suppose really a, a good deal of what I do is imaginative. I mean, it might, it's, it's based upon fact but um, it's, it's also got to be artistically right, you see, it's another thing. I mean, I see astronomy as an all-embracing subject. Uh, it embraces all the sciences. It embraces uh, physics, mathematics, um, uh, art as well, uh, painting, poetry. Thomas Hardy, for example, uh, the great writer, the writer of the Mayor of Crosterbridge, was actually an amateur astronomer, and he wrote a book called Two on, a, Two on a Tower, which is well worth reading, which is about an amateur astronomer who's interested in variable star observing. The creator of the Discworld universe, novelist Terry Pratchett, also owes his inspiration to astronomy. I got into science fiction by way of astronomy. That's what really happened. What I, what I discovered, first of all, were the tea cards. And I was looking at the night sky, and I found a few astronomy books, good old Patrick's, certainly, a couple of his. But I got into science fiction because it had planets and stars and galaxies in it. Um, it's got lots of other stuff as well, and science fiction shouldn't be defined by that. I think it's also true, though, that... that, that people that are very interested in how the universe works tend to be a fertile ground for science fiction readers. I don't just mean, you know, the, 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 the full-on fans, but the people who, who read science fiction as part of a, you know, wide reading diet. All right, I'll tell you what. Listen to this. Thanks to amateur astronomers, the secrets of the universe are now becoming less science fiction and more science fact. While most of us settle down to another evening on the sofa, you can be sure that this small band of unpaid workers will be getting ready for another night shift. I'm having immense difficulty finding Saturn at the moment. It's over there, you can see it with the naked eye, but uh, at just this moment, I cannot pick it up in the main telescope, and it's really annoying me. Just remember that you're standing on a planet that's evolving and revolving at 900 miles an hour that's orbiting at 90 miles a second so it's reckoned a sun that is the source of all our power. 
Coming up next this evening here on BBC Four, we're charting the final chapter of the story of England with Michael Wood. And pray that there's intelligent life somewhere up in space, cause...